significant figures. Okay, so today we're going to talk about significant figures in calculations and measurements. And this first part of the presentation is going to be mainly about measurements. Now, we have to limit the measurement to the proper number of digits uh, when we take a measurement. And that's what is called uh, significant figures. And we also want to be able to recognize the number of sig figs in some quantity that we have. And in order to express our answers correctly uh, when we do calculations, we also need to limit those mathematical results to some sort of number that is proper with the number of significant figures that uh, we can claim. Okay, so the first little exercise, just get out your calculator and type in 337 divided by 217 and then press the equal sign. Now you're going to get a number with a whole bunch of decimal places here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And basically that's kind of ridiculous. So we start off with two numbers that have three sig figs each and we get what would be 12 sig figs. And that's not reasonable. And so, um, and so what we would want to do is limit this answer to the correct number of significant figures. And like I say, we'll talk about this more as we go through uh, this chapter. Now, um, just, you know, it, it goes without saying that this number does not have the correct number of significant figures. So how do we figure that out? All right. So the first thing has to do with uh, significant figures and measurements. Now, we have an object here and then we have a ruler. And basically, we're going to measure it. And so we're going to see we have one centimeter okay and you can see this is kind of blown up so it isn't really one centimeter that looks bigger than that to me of course um, but so one centimeter 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 so we have three tick marks but we didn't make it to the 0.4 okay so that means we know we have at least 1.3 uh, centimeters for our measurement now those are known digits, okay? So we have tick marks to tell us that we definitely have that quantity. Now, significant figures are gonna be the known digits, the ones you have tick marks for, plus the first estimated digit. So that's gonna be this last digit between. So we have 1.3 and then let's see, I think that kind of looks like it's a little over half. So let's call that 0.6 maybe, okay? And let's go to the let's go to the next slide. And um, and so we're going to estimate that last digit. It looks like it's a little more than halfway. So let's make it a six. So we have one point three. Here's our known, and then here's our part. You know, so part of that tick mark, um, and we think it's about you know a little over halfway. So one point three six is a measurement that is reasonable significant figures wise for this measuring instrument and um, so we have two known digits and then we have an estimated digit. Okay, so let's just think about this a little bit more. So basically significant figures involves the concept of reporting the proper number of digits in a measurement or a calculation. Um, and basically this is the limit of what we are sure of in our measurement or our calculation. And so as I mentioned, we're going to report all the known values, so what we have tick marks for, and the first estimated value. Okay, so here's another little practice, okay? So we're measuring pressure here, so that's pounds per square inch, that's PSI. So on this gauge, we have at least four PSI, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3 PSI, okay, and then we have a little bit more. So 4.3 PSI, that is our known set of digits. But the next, the, the arrow is between the third and fourth tick mark, okay, and it looks like it's maybe one-third of the way across, okay, so I'm going to estimate that as one-third, so that's 4.3 and another third, so 4.33 PSI, okay? 
And just as a little practice right now, this number right here actually has three significant figures. That's what we would say. We're going to learn some significant figure rules here in a second. So you'll know that too. Okay. All right. So here's another example. So go ahead and try this one. And then, um, and then we will talk about it on the next slide. Okay. Now we have, again, a little measuring instrument here, and then we have a rectangle. And we can see that it's more than one centimeter. We can see that it's more than 0.2, 1.2 centimeters. And it looks like it's right about halfway between the 0.2 and the 0.3. Okay. So, um, so we have um, 1.2 as our known, and then we're going to put a 5 there because it looks like it's halfway through. So 1.25 or 1 and a quarter centimeters. Okay. And this also has three significant figures in this number. All right. So we've been mentioning significant figure rules. So what are they? Um, how do we know whether a number is significant or not, especially if we didn't directly take the measurement ourselves? So the first rule is that any non-zero digit is significant. So in the number 956, all three of those digits are significant. Now, any zeros between non-zero digits, so those are called uh, sandwich zeros. That's what I like to call them and other people too. But they're sandwiched in between non-zero numbers. Those guys are always significant also. So anything non-zero and any zeros that are sandwiched in between um, non-zero numbers. Those guys are all significant. Now, here's a tricky one. So we have 890,000. So the only digits that are actually significant here are the 8 and the 9. And the rest of this, we could just use scientific notation to, to uh, give us the proper exponent and the proper magnitude of our number, but the 8 and the 9 are the only significant digits here. So these are the significant figures. There's two significant figures, and all the rest of these zeros are placeholders. So they keep our number in the proper magnitude, okay? Um, now, if we were to put a decimal place there, then all of those zeros would be significant. And so what that would say, be saying is that we counted exactly uh, 890,000, okay? And probably not quite exactly, but you get the idea. So basically, you know, we're, we counted and we know we have 890,000. So we're going to put a decimal place after that. So always watch out for that because that, that, there doesn't have to be another zero there. And frankly, if there is, then that number would have seven significant figures instead. So that's why you're going to see that. So no decimal place. All those zeros are just placeholders with a decimal place. Now they're all significant. All right. Same goes for numbers, uh, for zeros at the beginning of a number. So these are leading zeros. And again, they're placeholders. So that's, a, that's just a, you know, zero point, you know, so that's going to be there all the time. We usually just ignore it. And then one, two, three, four, five, six placeholder zeros. They just make sure that our number is the proper magnitude and it's really, really small. So basically only these two non-zero numbers, 77 and 6, those are the only significant numbers in this in here. So um, in this number. So this, this number has two significant figures, but let's say we have a 7, 6, and then we added two zeros after that. So after non-zero numbers, now those guys are significant too because we're saying that we measured that, okay? So, uh, so now we have four significant figures in this number versus two here. So watch out for the decimal place trick, you know, a decimal place after zeros for the large numbers and watch out for zeros tacked on to the end after non-zero numbers um, in really small numbers. Okay, and remember these leading zeros, they're always just going to be placeholders, so they're not significant. All right, so in each of those measurements, uh, decide how many significant figures there are. So go ahead and take a second to do this, and then uh, we'll come back and talk about it. All right, so the first, uh, first one, 36.7 meters. So using rule one, basically any non-zero number is significant. So that is, uh, they're all significant, and there's three digits there, so we have three sig figs. Now, if we use rule four, we know that the leading zeros are not significant. 
but we have one, two, three, four significant digits here. And this also is a sandwich zero. So remember, those are always, uh, those are always significant. So one, two, three, four. So we have uh, four significant figures in, um, in this number. Now, the next one, again, we have sandwich zeros. So all non-zero are significant and sandwich zeros are significant. So we have four sig figs in 2002. And then finally, uh, 306,490,000 people, okay? Now, all non-zero digits are significant. So these first five are all significant, but these last four zeros, they just make sure we have the, a large enough number. They keep the, their placeholders, okay? Notice there's no decimal place here. So we're just gonna count one, two, three, four, five sig figs. All of these are placeholders. All right, so you'll wanna practice that until you get really good at it. And basically, significant figures are really, really important in chemistry and every science. And they basically indicate the number of known values plus one place that is estimated. Um, and so uh, you need to know the rules for which numbers in a quantity are significant and you wanna be able to decide that and report the number of significant figures in a number. Now, when we get to calculations involving addition and subtraction, we're gonna limit significant figures based on the rightmost place that all values have in common. We will talk about that in the next presentation. And same thing with multiplication and division, we're gonna limit significant figures to the least number of sig figs in all the data values. So we'll talk about that next.